Um, so this is kind of what we did yesterday. Um, now, somebody tell me where we left off. Where did we leave off at? We did chapter two. Oh, that's right. I remember. We jumped down to chapter two. So let's just go back up here to chapter one. All right, let's start that. I don't know why I was flipping through the pages. All right, so we're going to go back to chapter one. All right. Now, again, all you're doing is you're just kind of checking your work, see how things are going. Um, and I've already had a couple uh, emails. Uh, if it was too hard or, you know, don't worry about it right now. Just let me take care of you. All right. Just speak up if you don't know something. All right. The sum of one third of a number. So really we're doing one third of a number. To do one third of a number, we would just write down one third. Do I care what letter you use? No. no. All right. So one third N. Sum means to do what? Add. And then we would say 27. Good morning, good morning. Grab a seat real quick. All right, yes. Would it be okay if you did N? N what? You could do the other way around, N one over two. Um, actually, that's a good question. But remember, we generally put the number in front of the variable. We generally put the number in front of the variable. Okay. All right. The other thing I want to show you, too, is... Um, I want everybody to write this down too. Or you could say n over 3 plus 27. That's another really good way of doing it. All right, because a fraction bar just means what? Bless you. Fraction bar just means what? Division. That's exactly right. That's all it means. You might have any questions with that? All right, so let's. Yes. We don't do the regular division sign anymore. Never, ever will I write that. All right. All right. It's always a fraction. Okay. Now, number two, product just means to multiply. So we're going to multiply a number squared and four. What are you thinking? Uh, n or a squared times four. A squared times four. So I'm totally thinking that would be okay. But the best answer would be what? What did we just talk about? Four times a squared. Yeah. We put the number in front of the variable. Put the number in front of the variable. So we say that's just what? 4n squared or 4a squared. Doesn't matter. All right. Is everybody good? Yeah. All right. So this is the answer I prefer. The number in front of the variable. All right. The number in front of the variable. All right. Let's check out number three. All right. Now, number three, I'm not going to ask you on the test to write it out well that that's one's kind of easy yes sir uh, the sum of the sum of a number in five no, a number of five times a number cubed that's exactly nine. right that's exactly right you can say that all right let's say i'll tell you again what he said the sum of five times a number cubed and nine that's a good way of writing it you could also just literally say five times a number cubed plus nine. All right, there's so many different ways to write that. But the main thing I wanted you to remember was something to the third power means what? Cubed. Cubed. Something to the third power means cubed. All right? Now, when we get to question number four, I really strongly believe this should just be mental math for you. No work involved here. 12 minus four is what? 8 divided by 2. Four. Notice we did inside the parentheses first. All right. Then I need someone to help me with 3 squared. Say it. 9. Nine. And then what was left in the parentheses? 4. Four. So your final answer is just what? 36. Yeah, that was pretty easy. 36. Yes, sir. No, no, no. No. You guys are good at math. All right. So... Some of you can just look at that and tell me what the answer is. But just don't be wrong. Right? Don't be wrong. Don't get them all wrong because you did mental math. Your mental math should be pretty sharp. All right? Just like here with number five. All right? What's four times W? Eight. Eight. Plus what's V minus five? Three. Yeah, come on. Does everybody see that? And then times what? Four. I almost didn't see that. All right? So your final answer there is obviously what? 20. 20. All right, easy enough.
All right, now the properties you were supposed to review a little bit. We did, I think, talk about it maybe a little bit. What's this property? Identity. Ooh, tell them. Community? What do you think? Mm hmm. Identity. Mm hmm. Anybody else? Associative. Now, yeah. associative, remember, has to have grouping in it. You said distributive. Distributive would have a parentheses also. Commutative would be addition or subtraction when the order is mixed up. Hmm. So, in this case right here, an identity really means this. That's a good guess. But an identity would be if I do 11 times 1 or... 11 plus 0. Those are the identities. Whenever you multiply by 1 or add 0, that's an identity. Because the number stays the same. Does everybody agree with that? No, minus 0. Plus or minus 0. Doesn't change. Alright. Now, in this case, believe it or not, this is... The 11 is being cancelled out. The 11 is being cancelled out. So, actually, this is called an inverse. Yeah. All right. And technically, it's called the multiplicative inverse. All right. Sounds like a big word. It's just multiplying, right? So. Bless you, bless you. I'll, I'll explain it again. Just to, just a second. All right. This is an inverse. All right. Just like this would be an inverse. Why is five times one fifth an inverse? Yes, because it's canceling out. All right, because it's canceling out. All right, here's another example of an inverse. If I said negative 3 plus 3, why are those inverses? Because they're what? Cancel. They, cance they cancel each other out. Exactly correct. Now watch this one. If I said the square root of x squared, What's that called? Probably. No, 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 no. Come on. What have what I given you three, two examples of? Inverse. So that's probably a what? Inverse. Inverse. Because what happens to a square and a square root? What do they do to each other? They cancel each other out. Right. Yes, ma'am. So how would you solve in this case? There's nothing to solve. It's just naming the property. All right. Now, yeah, yeah. So, so what would cancel eleven out? Somebody help her. What? Yes, it would. Thank you. All right. So that's very, very good. So n would equal one over eleven. All right. Thank you. That was very good. So you think of inverses as just canceling out. That's a big part of chapter one and two and three is inverses. All right, because it'll help you solve equations. All right, now, somebody tell me about number seven. What is n probably in number seven? What do you think? Associative. Now, remember, associative, since we've heard that a couple times, I'm going to write an example of associative. All right, um, the associative property would be something where we would do a plus b parentheses plus C is equal to A plus B plus C, where the grouping symbols are in a different order. All right? The grouping symbols are a different order. Hold up. Just tell me about this now. Let's talk about it. So I want everybody to make sure if you're not, I want you to write uh, an example of the associative property down. That's the associative property. Then what I'm going to do is we're going to write a commutative property. All right. All right. So we're going to do a commutative property would be if I said A plus B is equal to what? B plus A. B plus A. That would be the commutative property. 
All right, now why is that the commutative property? Because the order is what? The order is different. Whenever you mix things up, it's automatically the commutative property. All right, now it could be multiplication. So if I said B times C is equal to C times B, that's another example of the commutative property. Yes? So this one has commutative property? Well, let's, let's take a look now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Or I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Get it out of my way. Now, what does everybody think n is? Three, three right? So I'm going to put n equals three because you are correct. Now, in my opinion, I I really didn't like this because I don't I didn't really expect you to know these, but I'm going to give you uh, some more. Um, I'm going to give you some more properties. All right. No, it is not. You're very. It's correct. You, you're not, I mean, you are correct. It's not the commutative property. It's not the commutative property. The reason it's not the commutative property is because the order is still the same, right? It's not mixed up, all right? Now, this, believe it or not, is, um, I want to say it is the reflexive property. And you don't have to know that. I don't expect you to know that, guys. I don't know. So that's called the reflexive property. And what is the reflexive property? You are equal to what? Yourself. You are equal to yourself. All right? So a lot of times, the reflexive property, and another example of the reflexive property will be, uh, will be A is equal to A. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You are equal to yourself. That's the reflexive property. All right? Am I good? It's really that simple. Yes? I don't know if this can happen in an algebra way that can't help me think of it where yourself is a reflexive form. Right. Okay. There you go. For those of you guys who are good at English. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Very good. All right. Now, we're also going to show you the symmetric property. All right. Another one that's common is the symmetric property. And I'll give you an example of that. The symmetric property says this. If A equals B, then B equals A. Does that make sense? If A equals B, then B equals A. Isn't that kind of obvious, right? But there's just names for these properties. Because in math, we just couldn't say that's the reason why, because I said so. All right, they give names for all of the things that will help you solve math problems. So that's called the symmetric property. So we have a reflexive, we have a symmetric. Later I'll talk to you about the transitive property, but we won't have to worry about that right now. All right, those are two good properties. All right, reflexive and symmetric. Now again, is that really math? No, that's just what? Memorizing. All right, those are just things you have to know. All right, now uh, for number eight, this is why I like the iPad. I come over here, I like this. You don't have to name the steps, all right? I don't care about that. The only thing I care about is you can evaluate that properly for me. All right, all right, now. Again, let's see. Anybody got a shot for number eight? Yes, sir. So I want to know what the answer is. You try to figure it out. Tell me what the answer is. What do I think? What do you think? Six. I got a six so far. One. 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 All right, so it looks like one might be an answer, but let's double check. All right, so here we go. For this problem, all right, uh, this is the important one. Look right here, guys. We got to do inside the parentheses first, correct? Does everybody agree? We got to do inside the parentheses. Now, do I do the multiplication or the division first? 
Multiplication. And the reason I do the multiplication is because it is listed first. what? First. It is listed first. So we have to do that. So oh, what's six God. times one? Six. Six. Now here's what I want to do for you guys. I don't like this division sign. The division sign is a what from now on? Fraction. Fraction. So this is really six over 36. And then I'm multiplying that by what? I'm multiplying that by 6. All right, so if you made a careless mistake on that, you should understand exactly what I'm talking about now. Anybody have any questions? And so far, no one's saying much. So, so should we write so we divide and then divide? Well, actually, now I'm trying to show you that, guess what? Does it really matter? If you understand numbers, it really doesn't matter in this case. Right? Because what? If I reduce the fraction, that becomes 6 times 1 over 6, which is the same as what? 1. So I always try to teach kids, do the division first, because why? Because the numbers are smaller. But would it matter if I did 6 times 6 and then divided by 36? Is that the same? Yeah, that's kind of the same. Everybody see that? All right, so it would still be what? It would still be 1, regardless of what you did. All right? Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir? Would you write that as a fraction? Or um, well, if a uh, fraction can be written as a whole number, we always write it as a whole number. Right? I don't want you to tell me that's 1 over 1. You with me on this? Yeah. All right. Now, again, I just want the answer. Yes. Um, now, again, I I'm happy with you on this. That's a very good question. So let me explain to you why you're not going to use the distributive property. I want everybody to listen because it's a very good question. All right. She said I use the distributed property. All right. Let me show you what's wrong with the distributed property. All right. What's wrong with the distributed property is this right here is not addition. You don't distribute through multiplication and division. You just distribute through what? Addition and what? Subtraction. You see what I'm saying? So look, again, I'm really, I think that's a very good question. So watch. If I did 4 times 2 times 3, do I, is that equivalent to 4 times 2 times 4 times 3? No. You see what I mean? But if it was 4 parentheses 2 plus 3, then it would be 4 times 2 plus 4 times 3. That's what you're thinking. Okay, that's a very, very good question. In order to do distributive property, that has to be an addition or a what? Subtraction. So that was very good. So, All right, very good. So, so now... So if you use the distributive, it has to have an addition. Exactly, exactly. Just like number 9, you can distribute there. 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 3 is 15, 50 plus 15 is what? 65. 65, or we could just say what? 13 times 5, and most people know that's 65. All right, that's how a lot of people do multiplication in their head as far as, um, like I would expect everybody here to say, if I said what's 47 times 8, Right, I would just have everybody do that's obviously 376, right? Obviously, obviously. You, you, don't, you don't even really have to think about it, true? Right, yeah. <laughs> right. now if you can't do that, let, let's talk about it real quick because every you should be experts at mental math. So, here we go. I'm going to teach you how it was so simple to do. All right, so we say, What's four times eight? So that's really 320. So I'm expecting you to hold 300, be able to hold 320 in your head. Does everybody agree with that? And then what's 8 times 7? Now do you see how simple that was? Right? That's super simple. 300 and what? 76. All right, so let's try that one more time. Let's say we did, let's say... Uh, 40, well, I don't want to do 40. Let's do something a little bit harder. 67 times 7. We did 67 times 7. 
So we say first 60, 60 times 7 is what? 420. 7 times 7 is? 49. So 420 plus 49. Wow, look how easy that was. 469. That's what you're supposed to be able to do. All right, that's what you're supposed to be able to do. And I'll help you with your mental math, all right? Um, it's very simple to be good at adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing in your head. It's really simple, but you just I just have to show you, maybe. All right, so is everybody good with that? All right, so mental math is important. All right, now let's take a look at number 10. What are we doing there? Simplifying. All right, somebody take a shot at it. What do you think? 11w squared plus 7z squared. You are amazing. 11w squared plus 7z squared. Does everybody agree? Yes. You just can't what? You can't combine terms that aren't exactly the same. And w and z are different, so you can't put them together. Everybody good with that? Yeah. All right. Now, number 11 is where we have to do... <coughs> blush. Number 11 is where we have to do the distributed property, but... For us, I want to see how smart you are. Everybody up on the board, look. What's 4 times 5x? Plus what? No. Plus 3x. Thank you. Which is what? 23x. And then 4 times 2 is? Everybody happy with that? So that's what I'm kind of expecting out of you guys. What's 4 times 5? So what I'm saying, right? So I know I'm going to do what? In my head, I'm thinking, wow, I just have to combine those, right? And that's how I got the 23. And then I did the what? And then I did the 4 times the 2 oh, I see. to get the 8. Yes? Well, why would you multiply the 4 with the 5x and the 3x? Mm -hmm. I'm doing the distributive property. Oh. All right, so let's, let's break it down just to make sure. So 3x plus 20x plus 8. The distributive property goes this times this, this times this, because there's addition involved. Oh, so you only do distributive property with the closest number that it matches? Brilliant. Exactly. All right, hopefully it's coming back to you. All right, now here, everybody should be able to look at that and just say, obviously, that's 260, no thought at all, right? Yeah. Everybody see that was simple, right? Because what did I do first? Yeah, of course, I did 4 times 5. And then 2 times what? 13. I don't care about the times 1, right? Everybody see that? Just like over here, we should say 20 and 20 makes what? 40. Right, you're always trying to collect them so it's easier to add mentally. The three and the seven go together, and the six and the four go together. So, everybody happy with that? All right. All right, so here we go 2451, 2451, 2451. So, is that feet, yards, or miles if we're measuring from New York to Los Angeles? Obviously. Come on, guys. Miles. miles. That was too easy. All right, so now Sheila's calculator reads that number as the volume of a cylindrical canister. Sheila measures the radius to be 2.4 and the height to be 8. All right, determine where rounding should occur and give the rounded answer. All right, so um, again, I, I don't, there, there's something in this algebra book, and I'm just going to uh, give you a, I'm not interested in errors, okay? So there's a particular section in the algebra book that we're skipping altogether, all right? And this was one of them, all right? So we don't have to really talk about, uh, we don't really have to talk about the rounding, all right? What was the right answer? Um, so it says, um, Sheila measured the radius to be 2.4 and the height to be 8. Determine where the rounding should occur. All right, obviously, I'm not going to ask you for this answer, correct? So, again, generally, in math, 
I say we always round to three decimal places. The book has different thoughts oh, about it, right? So again, standard is three decimal places. All right, that's what I would want you to say. So one four four point seven six what? Five. Five. Exactly. And then we would say you're measuring volume in cubes. All right. But again, there's a section in the algebra book we're skipping all together. All right. So don't worry. All right. Now let's talk about the graphs and the charts. All right. Let's see how you're doing, which was one of the most important things we actually do. All right. Use the graph that shows Robert's bowling scores for his last four games. Identify the independent, all right, and the dependent, all right. Now, I think we did a little bit of that on IXL, but maybe not. We did, yeah. but not like this time. Okay, so yeah. does anybody remember what the independent was? Yeah. You're exactly correct. I'm very proud of you. Independent is the x-coordinate. Very, very good, by the way. Very good. Independent. And so the Y, here's how I learned it. The Y depends on the what? The Y depends on the X. X can be anything. Y depends on X. All right. So that's why we say that the dependent, all right, the dependent is the what? The score. The independent is the game. Yes. For the answer, I said score depends on. Yes. It says identify the independent. The independent is the what? Game. The dependent is the what? Score. All right, that's how I want you to think about it. All right, number 17. Describe what may have happened between the first and the fourth game. Someone explain to me if you're bowling what might have happened. Yes. You bowler? Wow, that's very good. All right. He was knocking more pins down. Now, for me personally, bowling, right? How many games do you think you can bowl before you get tired, probably? Mm -hmm. Two, maybe three. Did everybody see that? Seven. Right? So so if I were if I were discussing this, I would probably say that he got tired or something. All right, kind of silly. You could put just about anything you wanted down there. You could have said maybe his bowling ball broke and, you know, he couldn't bowl anymore. Or he had to leave early. Or there's so many different things you can say. Right? All right. So here we go. So these kinds of open-ended questions I'm not real happy with. You won't be getting a lot of those. All right. Now let's take a look at 18 and 19. It says for questions 18, uh, Use the table that shows 2006 airmail letter rates. Write the data as a set of ordered pairs. So the weight is the what? X. And the rate is the? So if I'm going to write it as a set of ordered pairs, it would be 2 comma 1.80, then what? Then what? And then? Yeah. I would say, obviously, you don't need the zeros. And now you're just supposed to do what? Graph them. All right, let's graph it and see what happens. So at 2, we're at... There isn't something for one, is there? No, so we're just plotting the points to see what happens. So two, we're gonna graph 1.8. So again, put 1.8 about right there, right? Three, 2.75, we could just do something like that. Four, what? Three point, three point seven. so we could say about right there. And then five, what? 4.65. So what does it look like? Yeah, right? 
obviously the more weight, what? The more cost, right? To me, it looks what? It looks linear, which is a fancy word for saying it's just a what? Just a line. Everybody good with that? All right. So that was a nice little review of chapter one. Don't you think that was pretty easy, right? A few little properties you didn't know. That's okay. All right. Let me figure out what time we need. So long service, 34. You are absolutely correct. It is 34. That was pretty good timing then, right? The bell should be ringing. All right. Yes. Yes, tonight, try chapter two the best you can. All right. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. It was a very good day. Very good day. Try those ERB questions as well down there. All right, those are really fun. Yep, good idea.